All right. Okay. Welcome everybody to November, nearly Yay. the end of the year. Uh, uh, it's November 16th. We're getting started here at 10.06 in the morning for those of us not on Idaho time. <laughs> and uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, we don't have any people who aren't currently identified on the list. We had a caller a couple minutes ago who just was caller one and didn't respond to any requests for a name. So everybody received the tentative agenda for today, I assume. And everybody received the minutes from last week's meeting and had a chance to go over them a little bit. Were there any additions, deletions, or corrections that anybody wanted to suggest for the meeting minutes? We're all so quiet today. <laughs> OK. Well, if nobody has any suggestions for changes, additions, or deletions, does anybody want to approve the meeting minutes? Or can I assume they're approved by a claim? I'll move to approve, Ms. Perry. I second. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No? Okay. So the meeting minutes are approved as they stand. Uh, do we have any requests for additional agenda items today? Beth and I both did a, realize that since we have the new people, we need to select new officers. So uh, we can do that at the, the end of everything unless anybody's in a hurry to become the chair of the committee right now. Just have a quick question. Who are the new um, people and do we have a quorum even? Because we don't have very many people here. That's why I wondered. Okay. Um, that was one of the things that was on the agenda was to welcome the new council members. Um, Mary from Gillum County, Cheryl from Harney County, Maggie from the Dells, Anne. Um, from Hood River High School and Brittany from BMCC are um, new council members. Um, I did send out uh, a request to vote to each of the members in those categories, um, received, um, received uh, the necessary number of votes. Um, nobody was um, opposed. Um, so those council members did get voted in. As far as a quorum, I'm not sure. I'm not sure with my log how accurate it is at this point. So Beth will need your help getting that okay. updated. I, I did update uh, the um, website um, and okay. added the new council members as well as their ending term. So okay, I can just use that. Okay, I can bring that document up if we want to look at it. Two, three, four. Yeah, I'm trying to think whether we have seven council members. I'm not seeing. Okay. I'll let Perry um, review that. Yeah, I think we only have six here. If my brain math at 10 a.m. is, is working well enough. Six is 50% though. Is it? And I'm counting seven, so I don't know why. Maybe I'm counting somebody who's not a council member. But yeah, I think we're I think we're good with the quorum. Okay. I think okay. I count seven as well. 
Okay. All right. Woohoo. So yeah, welcome to all the new members. We got the meeting minutes approved. So do we want to go ahead and with the committee reports really quick? Sure. Or maybe not so quick since they're usually the largest part of most of these meetings. <laughs> Um, I wrote out the notes, so I think I'll be succinct enough not to make it the largest part of the meeting. Um, Did you see John has his hand up? Yes. Oh, hi, John. Mary, hi. Uh, Mary just wanted to say that her name wasn't on the list. It was in chat, so. Mary Reeser. Yeah. Mary's not on the list. Oh. Oh, the attendance log? Is that the list you're referring to, Mary? Sorry, I muted myself, yes. Okay. So, um, yeah, Perry's got to get that updated with the new council members. So that will happen. Um, no worries. Okay, cataloging committee met October 4th. Um, it was very well attended. Um, we discussed the audience fixed field um, and talked about how specific ages were added to the display of those audience choices. Um, a reminder was given that the 655 genre terms need to be authorized and for the most part should have the second indicator seven with the source specified in subfield two. So cataloging speak for um, those two things. Um, we also review the cataloging resources on the web. Circulation committee. Um, Kathy, do you want me to report on that or would you like to report? I can report. Okay. Circulation committee met on November 9th, which is the second Tuesday of the month. We'll be meeting that day every month for a while. Um, we reviewed um, the policy and the changes we had been working on pre-COVID. Then we talked about people's um, policy or procedures and how they had changed during COVID. Perhaps they had raised the number of holds to accommodate curbside and um, issues like that. So I sent out a survey and I'm hoping everybody gets a chance to um, answer. So far we've had 21 answers. How many libraries do we have part of stage? Way more than 21, right? I wanna say it's pretty close to 80, like yeah. 77 or something like that. So a, a 21 have answered um, and I haven't gone through to see if they've answered um, what they're, if they're, um, from the same libraries. I haven't double checked that yet. And Kathy, just a heads up hmm? that some of those um, library districts will probably only be responding for one of the libraries in their their districts. Sure. So that'll yeah. be. Yeah. Um, actually, 21 is a pretty good response so far. We'll be meeting again December 14th at 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. And we will be using the survey answers, we'll be making the proposed changes in the policy and then um, send it off to the, do we send it to the board first or do we send it to the membership? Um, my recommendation was to send it to all the SAGE libraries for review. Right. So that okay. we could get any um, suggestions for things that we may have overlooked um, and need mm -hmm. to add to the document, meet again, mm -hmm. and then have a draft document for the council. So those are our plans. The main one that's gotten the most responses as in favor, some of them are tied, um, raising the number of um, items checked out. Uh, currently it's at 35 in the policy. We want to raise it to 50. A lot of people felt it already was 50 and didn't realize it was 35. So some of these changes are ones that um, retroactive to the uh, actual procedures that we've been following. And that's it for circulation. Ooh. I remember when Hood River first joined and Buzzy was upset that we didn't have an unlimited checkout policy, but 
I remember correctly, Evergreen at the time had a maximum checkout allowance of 99 items. So he couldn't have had unlimited anyway. So they were making people multiple cards in order to check out more items to people. Really? People want more than 50? Oh, yeah. We have had patrons who wanted to check out. I guess out if you have little kids, um, yeah. picture books add up pretty fast. Yeah. And movies. People like to check out movies a lot, but uh, we yeah. mm -hmm. have a 10 movie limit here because we used to have to retrieve them from a machine and put them in the case. And doing that with more than 10 just took forever. So Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. So if you haven't done the, the survey, jump in there. I could send it out today with a reminder. Yeah. Yeah, just harass everybody until everybody yep. answers. Um, any questions about any of that? No? Okay. Ann says she got kicked out because the meeting was ended, but she came back. All right. Uh, any evergreen updates? Ah, uh, you want to know evergreen software update? Sure. So like we've hit some roadblocks that we're trying to uh, plow through. Um, one of the things that we had an issue was um, in order before we did the upgrade, Equinox wanted us to um implement a test server um just because of the number of changes with the upgrade uh they just felt more comfortable testing our data in um the new code so um john's been working on that with eou um but because of all the work involved um it kind of came to a point where we were asking them for more work than um, they thought maybe should be the case. Um, so then our service agreement with EOU came into question and because the latest service agreement we have with EOU for SAGE um, was written in 2016. Um, and then when I asked, well, we are happy to um, implement a new service agreement uh, and if there is work that we're asking you to do that is beyond the service agreement um, please let us know what that cost would be per hour and I haven't heard anything back since then. So um, uh, Tim at EOU um, contacted John and said he's going to try and find out where the status of that is so that's in the works. Um, in the meantime, we're looking at other possible ways that we could implement a test server without EOU. Because um, one of the things we were looking at um, with the test server was using one of the old pieces of equipment um, that we moved away from um, using that as the test server, but in order to do that, that server has to be moved into the new wet network and made available to us so that we can um, install things on it. Um, the other idea was creating a, an entirely new virtual machine um, hosted on one of EOU's machines. So those were the two things we were looking at with EOU. Um, if we go outside of EOU, um, looking at what it would cost to have cloud space somewhere um, for a test server um, is one of the things we're looking at too. So anyway, that has delayed um, our date selection for the Evergreen software upgrade. Hopefully, um, all of that can be ironed out very soon and we'll be able to get a date to you, um, but that's what's going on right now. Any questions? Everybody's quiet. <laughs> so it's a, it's I have a random question. Go ahead. It has nothing to do with what you just explained, which sounds pretty good to me. Um, am I no longer on the board? Correct. Um, your term expired, Kathy, 
um, in June. Perfect. Okay. That's what I just want to make sure so I don't vote today. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Uh huh. So as soon as we hear anything, we'll um, communicate with Sage um, just to let folks know what's going on. It's uh, we're excited about the upgrade um, update. Would like it to happen, but uh, have to get past this roadblock. Interesting. Do you think that they're not replying means that they're not going to do it at all? I think um, I think it's a workload issue, um, mm -hmm. especially if we're going to need to enter into a new agreement because they feel like um, it's no longer applicable. Um, it's administrative paperwork and. Um, I mean, I, that's just my sense, um, but we'll sh we should know something today because Tim was going to ask for a status update from the folks that were asking about the service agreement and our boundaries. Right, and when I talked to Tim, part of his concern was if we use the old server because it's completely out of warranty and it's old equipment, <clears throat> he's concerned that, wow, my voice is gone, sorry. <clears throat> Uh, he is concerned that it could just stop working and then it could end up with more work on their part. So, Thanks for the update. Yeah. So that's one of the two techie related things. Rachel, oh. do you want to talk about the other techie related thing that's on the agenda? Well, this can be Rachel and I. Um, Rachel had sent me an email saying that um, they're working on a cybersecurity policy um, as a priority this year. And she asked if Sage had one. And I thought, hmm, we've talked in the past about um, our backup routines and, and the data being saved um, in multiple locations. Um, but we don't have a SAGE specific cybersecurity policy. Um, do other libraries in SAGE have one? And um, should SAGE have one? Oregon Trail is going to do one because that's the best practice this year for special districts. So we're going to review their um, example policy and go from there. Okay, and Dia, you raised your hand and said you, Matilla, has one, the special library yeah, we district. Just have, we just have passed one in the last couple of three, four months, partly because it is part of the special districts. But one of the things that um, came to my mind as we were working on that, and also I think it was raised at one of the sessions at the Evergreen Conference, was with reports and personally identifiable information. And we need to be really careful about that, that we don't have, you know, if we pull reports that have people's information that, you know, lots of information, we need to make sure we don't have it laying around, we don't have it accessible. Um, because I was talking to somebody the other day that's totally unlibrary related, but they said, when I said something about, um, you know, we chose as our office not to do cataloging via Wi-Fi, they, they kind of looked at me and I says, well, it opens up the catalog for a number of different things. And, and we have a lot of patron information and they kind of went, oh, never thought of that. So, um, but we do, we have, we have a lot of information in the patron, in the, in the patron records. So, um, and of course, if you pull reports with lots of that information, it sits on your computer too. So another thing to think about. Yeah. And we didn't specifically formulate a cybersecurity policy here, but the city contracted with uh, IMS ESD for a two or three year tech support contract a couple of years ago because the city didn't have a tech support person. Every department was just kind of on their own and it was just a mess. 
so they came in and have been doing a bunch of stuff and they helped the city manager and the city council i assume create a policy and so we have one now um, which i think for us was kind of unnecessary because i was doing the library's it and we had security and and so forth and so on but now we have an actual written policy about it here so so do you yeah, think so i talked to go oh, ahead sorry go ahead uh, i talked to as well because of the best practices is why we developed one um for special districts but i talked to them there and they said their biggest concern is ransoming data so basically going in blocking things and then charging people fees to get all those records back so that's kind of what they're more concerned about than people like hacking in and finding out because you know as libraries we don't contain a lot of you know, we don't have social security numbers or any of that stuff but we do have, if we lost all of our patron records, that would be a huge <laughs> inconvenience for people. So yeah. I think that's what the um, concerns were. And I think like making sure we have data backup, that we have a firewall and that we're doing mm -hmm. password management that we're regularly, as all of us are changing our passwords because that's kind of where that can happen. So that's kind of why I brought it up. Yeah. Um... Yeah, password management, we've talked about it before, but I think it needs to be revisited. Um, I know, um, Perry, you at, at the Baker County Library District, you're really good to um, change those passwords on a regular basis, but I know that there's a lot of small libraries that don't, um, and uh, so that needs to be addressed. Well. And then we could do better. We we change our CERC password every year at our staff meeting, but you know everybody has other accounts as well that they log in with, and I'm, and we don't enforce those as much. So having an enforcement, a, a way to check and enforce that would really be helpful. I mean, okay. if Evergreen could develop that, it's been yeah. so long since you've changed your password, it's time to update it. That would be a really okay. strong update upgrade we need so an evergreen new feature um, would be to password management okay and Beth I'd be happy to send you the template that that SDAO had given us if you want to kind of see the different things yeah I can send that to you and John okay um, so that would be great I'm just wondering does Sage need a separate policy for this or does Sage just need to make sure that they're in compliance with all of the um, aspects? I think Sage should have a separate policy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That would be useful for a number of reasons, not the least of which is that if they implement a password management thing in Evergreen at the most simple level, people might just use the same password over and over again, which means you're not really changing the password. You're just you know, like Windows lets you use the same password over and over again until the more recent versions, they've stopped letting you do that so much. Okay. You have required password changes. So I just uh, wanted to share, we started using passphrases instead of passwords, you know, with uh, special characters and all that. Their passphrases are considered the best way to do things and you can remember it better. So we have everybody at our staff meeting submit random words and then we draw those out and put them together in a string so that's the fun thing you can add to your staff meetings I recommend it's really it. easy to remember those also yeah good suggestion Perry all right so Rachel's going to send me um, a document um, to use as an example and then um, I think we should put this on the agenda for our next council meeting to kind of review maybe a potential draft SAGE document. Ooh. Okay. Uh, looks like the next thing on the agenda sent out is the notice text spreadsheets. Yeah, it's not actually spreadsheets. I found out that was not the right format to put them in. So they're actually Word documents. I can bring yep. them up on my computer and share those. Um, I The main one I wanted to review today 
was the sage one. Um, Cause I think the individual libraries didn't really, for the most part, we didn't change those a lot. And, and if there was a change that folks wanted to go back to, um, we, I just worked with the individual library on that. Um, so let me, Too many documents up here. <laughs> All right, share. Okay. All right, it should you should be able to see it full screen. Um, the word document. Oh, I see it just appeared for you guys. Um, the first one is the 14 day email notification. Um, this one, this one has some verbiage that we altered for the pandemic. Um, so this is one of those that we might, um, or, or probably not might, um, probably do need to change. So. Any suggestions for this 14 day email notice for Sage? So was the added wording the last three sentences basically? Yes. Yeah. Um, I should have indicated that. So the processing of check-ins may be delayed for quarantine periods. Are any libraries still quarantining items? Not unless they look like they have bed bugs. <laughs> yeah, special procedures for those. Okay, so that phrase could be eliminated. Um, some libraries are waving or not charging. What is that phrase? Am I reading the wrong thing? Um, it's down below. It's kind of in the middle. There's a bunch of like uh, parameters where it's bringing in variables from different places in the mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. So um, we're looking at the 14 day sage one. Did um, and it's it's in the middle of the screen right here. Yeah, I see that. Okay. Um, so the last sentence. Oh, I see of it the now. first okay. paragraph. Yeah. I made my screen a little bigger. Oh, okay. well, we also should get rid of the next paragraph, in my opinion, but. That might not be the case with everybody. Yeah, I think so too. Um, just because um, I think folks have moved beyond waiving fines um, with open hours being restored to the library. I mean, obviously some libraries have elected to go fine free, <laughs> um, but that was a whole nother a whole nother well, issue. I think, I think if we left any of this in there, it could be more confusing to patrons than not. Yeah. Um, because it doesn't quite give any references to what this time period is when you remove that quarantine. True, so, true. So. Any objections to removing that second paragraph? Okay. All right. I've made those notes and I'll make those changes. Um, well, and I would, I would think that we would also want to do that with all of them that have that because there was at least one other one that had that, correct? Yes, I think so. that's why I was trying to remember. So I'm going through each of them. Um, yes. The seven day overdue. The seven day one is the same. Um, well, Processing of check-ins may be delayed, renew them. Okay, so with this one, it's just that one line. Processing of check-ins may be delayed for quarantine periods because it doesn't talk about fines at all. Yeah, it does. Oh, where? Is a bumper to the next page maybe? Um, I think that's a different notice. 
because that's a hold ready I, for pickup. At the top of the page there. It flows over from one page to another, I think. Okay. I have, because that's a 21 day um, on this page over here. So go to the third page, because that's where the 70 day overdue is, and it spills over to the top of the fourth. Okay. I don't like how Word is doing this. Yeah, I went through and adjusted so I could figure out. <laughs> okay, obviously I should have done the same thing. Okay. Oh, what is that? She, yeah, I see what she's talking about. So if you scroll up just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just didn't realize that was part of the seven day. Is that right there? Because of the way it's wrapping these pages for me. Um, it makes it difficult to know which pages go with what. But um, so we'll do the same thing for the seven day. Um, hold ready for pickup. Um, do we want to reference if your library is closed and there's no curbside service, your item will be held on the pickup shelf. I think that should be cut out also. Are you guys aware of any libraries that are still doing curbside along with regular pickup shelf? We we offer it. We offer it for people that call and ask. Okay. We still got our drive up window. The one the one on the right hand side is worded better than the one on the left hand side. I was just gonna just say says the, the holding ready for pickup, yeah. The SMS one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So maybe I, just, I think if we could just put that in the other, it would be helpful. Okay. Because it kind of covers it all. Okay. So move SMS message to the regular ready for pickup. Okay. It's more succinct, which is what we were looking for with a text message anyway. Okay. So did I miss any? Oh, the, there's a courtesy um, notice. Twenty-one day. Um, 21 day didn't have any changes. It was pretty bare bones. Um, three day SMS career notice, sorry, courtesy notice. Um, which I'm really concerned, where is the rest of that? Well, let's just look at the curtains. It doesn't appear that either of those had anything changed, really. Okay. Yep, you're right. So courtesy notices are fine. So we're mainly just changing the seven day, the 14 day, and the hold ready for pickup. Um, the other document I just sent out as. Um, well, for the libraries involved, um, if there were changes they wanted to make, also, as well as um, maybe libraries didn't know they could send out a reminder for things on the hold shelf. Um, a couple libraries have done that. We've implemented it for them. Um, so it's just a heads up as to um, new things you could consider. Um, if you hadn't already.
So any questions about those? Nope. Okay. Well, if, with the exemption of officers, I think we've reached the end of the agenda. Did Perry posted the financial report for the month in oh, okay. the chat if anybody wants to look at it okay. or if he wants to talk about anything on it. Um, I'll just say that the it looks like we're 99.8% funded with membership due payments. That was quick. So Ooh. thanks everybody for getting those payments in. Yeah. Okay. Officer selection time. Any volunteers or anybody want to nominate somebody against their will? I'll share the officer history document as well. It's fun. Anybody want to nominate somebody who didn't come today? <laughs> so you guys should see that up on the screen now. Yes. Feel free to nominate yourself if you want to volunteer. I will say, while everybody is thinking really hard about that, uh, we in Legrand would also appreciate it if when libraries made accounts for former Legrand members who've relocated, if you would make sure that your staff at all of your libraries and branch libraries are changing their barcode numbers over because we've had several more incidents since our last meeting of Legrand cards being left as the active card on cards at other libraries in the system. We've addressed that in the circulation policy, but we'll definitely review yeah. it to make sure it's um, exactly yeah. worded enough to cover that. Yeah, I went and looked at the posted one on the website and it's several years old, but it does say that you need to make them a correct and accurate library account for their new home library when they change libraries. And yeah. part of that should definitely include changing the card number. Over. We had a, quite a bit of discussion about it because some people are like, well, why do you have to call the other library when you change them? And do you just do an edit or do you do a whole new card or do you, it, yeah, everybody's doing it differently. Yeah, we don't actually call and we don't make them a new card. We just edit the old one, but we issue them mm -hmm. a new card here and everything when we do it. Sure. And when you leave people with the old card, you're leaving them with the ability to access services that we're trying to restrict to resident card holders and people who pay the non-resident yeah, card holder exactly. fee. Um, and so Carrie, the new director here, goes through all the cards in the whole system every couple months and blocks people who don't have Legrand card accounts but still have Legrand card barcodes as their primary barcode number. And we got another few angry phone calls from some small libraries in the system this last couple months about why is this patron blocked? I'll put that on our agenda for next cause, month. Because their card's not right. <laughs> yeah. Um... Ryan, in those cases, do they have multiple barcodes as active? No, usually not. They just have the Legrand card that they left here with. <sighs> okay. They just changed over the home library and updated the address. And so. All right. And the last phone call, it was 15 minutes, and they had the patron with them on speakerphone shouting about how they pay taxes. And I'm like, well, you do pay taxes. <laughs> 
taxes, but you don't pay taxes in Union County or La Grande, so. Yeah, they need to be paying the taxes where the card is from. Yep. Okay, I'll make sure we address that in the policy, and um, I think it's in there, but I'll double check. There's there's enough language in, in the one that's posted currently that it should be just a common sense part of you're a new patron, you get a card here thing. Well, the you're right, it I should understand. be, Brian. But unfortunately, I think over time, people begin to kind of get loose about that. Yeah. We've had this discussion for many years here in Umatilla County. Um, it started way back when Overdrive started in Eastern Oregon, and just a few people had it, or a few libraries had it, and we had issues yeah. um, because not all of our libraries had it. We, you know, since got that for all of our libraries, but it, it just has become a very loose issue and we've kept to try it kept trying to keep it you know tightened up but i think across the entire system there are some things if we don't continue to talk about them sometimes they just kind of they fall by the wayside yep yeah well and i i think part of it also may be that people just don't like to tell people no and we have these nice plastic cards now that will last you forever even if you throw it in the wash accidentally and you know I'm sure sometimes it's just the patron saying, can I please, and somebody not wanting to say no to, but. And or the patrons memorize their number and they don't want to get a new one. And yeah. sometimes I think they think if they get a new barcode number, a new library card, they'll lose all their history, which isn't right if you just do the edit. Yeah. So I think there's a little bit of un, uninformed yeah. um, patrons and staff trying to accommodate their wishes. Yeah. It can also cause issues with your overdrive stuff too, but some of that can at least potentially be fixed. Although there I is a way to merge your overdrive from one new card to another. Yeah, although I I have had a few people who I've done that for and it hasn't worked, so it's not a perfect solution, but it is there. So anyway, all right, who's doing it? Who's stepping up? Who wants the power? So quiet. Uh -huh. Do you want to do an email nomination of some poor sap somewhere out there? I would nominate that we, or I would make a motion that we keep those that we have as interim if they're willing through the rest of this year. I mean, we're halfway through the year almost. That's true. Uh, I. I guess I can do that for the time being. So I don't know if Perry's too busy or not. No, it's pretty light duty. Okay. All right. I guess we can do that then for the time being. All right. Do we have a second? For um, Dia made a motion. Um, I was wondering if we had a I'll second. second the motion. This is Anne. Okay. All those in favor of giving me ultimate authority for even longer? Uh, I guess more importantly, any opposed? Ryan, I don't know that you have any quote unquote ultimate authority, but. I, I know, I know. <laughs> it's a nice thing to think of, isn't it? Yes, yes. Too many. Too many He-Man cartoons as a kid, you know. Um, that maybe it would be worth it to revisit the idea of incentivizing being on the committee and more importantly being chair and or vice chair of the committee in in future years. Because I feel like we've talked about it a few times, but I don't know if it's ever really gone anywhere. And I don't know how much we can afford to actually incentivize it either. Yeah. But. That would definitely be a budget discussion. Um, yeah. Which is coming up. <laughs> I it's guess up. budget committee is going to have to start meeting soon. Yeah. Do we want to look at those formula calculation options again or just stick with the what we did this last time of uh, incorporating some population 
element to the calculation. Didn't we kind of bypass that because of the pandemic? Mm -hmm. We did, but the, we should the... probably start looking at it again then. Okay. I'm just saying, I'm thinking that the population change was just adopted for this current year. So that's a change. Um, that so, was one piece of the calculation yeah. options. That we yeah, right. oh, one yeah. piece. So you think everybody's ready for more? Well, it doesn't mean we can't look at them. True. Sure. Look at the two possibilities together. If it's not huge, huge changes, then maybe If I remember it's correctly, worth... most of the smaller libraries actually got a little tiny bit cheaper or had a negligible upward change. Most of the libraries that were impacted by it were the larger libraries anyway. So. There were definitely some well, there are some winners and some losers now. So the, yeah. the revision is attempting to correct those disparities. Um, and and yeah, there will be big changes, but we're we're going to roll those changes out over five years. Yeah. So that it's doable. Okay. Now, Perry, um, just to limit your workload. You had come up with lots of options for us. Um, can we narrow those options down so that there's not as many calculations that need to be worked on? Or what are your thoughts on that? Um, you know, I think uh, since I already have the work from last time, it shouldn't be as much this time. I could just use those. Okay. All right, so so what do you think the next steps forward are? Um, the budget committee gets together to determine what the budget should be for the upcoming year and then and then just the cost allocation for that budget is a separate discussion item, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. Anything else we need to talk about today? Anybody have any other questions, comments, issues with my hair, things of that sort? Are we all okay today? Shall we make a motion to close the meeting then? See you next time, everybody. Yeah. All right. Thanks. I realized I seconded the minutes and I wasn't an officer. Oh. Mm. Sorry. Well, that's okay. I became full time president of the Sage council without going through the nominating and voting process so weird things happen do we have somebody else who's willing to second on the minutes i'll second it okay thanks for noting that kathy yeah, yeah you and asked that after that point and it was weird uh, we have a lawyer that's part of our uh foundation board and I was surprised to hear him say the bylaws you don't have to be so strict about them <laughs> they're just guidelines you can oh you can bend the rules sometimes yeah the lawyer really? in our board is the one that brings up all the ideas that are illegal <laughs> okay <laughs> oh well all right well thanks everyone well, Go ahead. Yeah. I just said I'd move that we would adjourn. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Tia. Second that, and everybody is leaving. So.